The very last topic in this course is essentially atmospheric chemistry, and this is really a whole enormous topic unto itself, and there's some pretty interesting chemistry here, so if it interests you, I encourage you to look into it. But here we are going to first talk about sort of some basics about chemical transformations in the atmosphere, the basic pollutant types, reaction basics, and then some important transformations for pollution um, especially. Smog, there's two basic types that we'll talk about, um, and in class we'll talk about acid deposition and stratospheric ozone. We'll see how much time we have to cover these two last two bits. So there are kind of two classes of pollutants that people talk about in the atmosphere. There are primary pollutants and secondary pollutants. So primary pollutants are the pollutants that cause harm in their emitted state, as they're emitted directly from cars or factories or even natural sources. Secondary pollutants are things or pollutants that cause harm after they've been transformed. So they're not emitted directly from a source. They are emitted as something that is not terribly distressing or harmful, and then through atmospheric chemistry get transformed into something that does cause us harm. And um, that's things like ozone, um, nitric acid. So some primary pollutants are things like carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, sulfur dioxide. And I'll show you some examples coming up here. So carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide, they're both primary pollutants. They are result well, carbon monoxide results from incomplete fossil fuel combustion. Carbon dioxide is a um, result of complete combustion. So this is sort of an abbreviated equation that you're used to seeing fuel plus oxygen. So we're burning fuel, turning it into, if there's complete combustion, carbon dioxide and water. If it's incomplete, we end up with these other products like carbon monoxide and also hydrocarbon fragments. So that's soot, essentially. And this is what happens in complete combustion when there's not enough oxygen around for this full reaction. And this is just an example fuel here. So not enough reaction, we end up with carbon monoxide and, and soot hydrocarbon fragments. So here's some questions for you to think about. Would there be more incomplete combustion in Denver or Boston? So you can think about which of these two places might have more oxygen availability what that might mean for uh, the production of carbon monoxide and soot. Another thing to think about is why are long tunnels ventilated, which they are, <laughs> um, and what that might mean. If, if we didn't ventilate a tunnel, what would that mean for carbon monoxide and, uh, and soot um, from incomplete combustion? And uh, people particularly care about carbon monoxide production because it, it bonds really strongly to the hemoglobin in blood um, and results in you essentially not being able to breathe or get distribute oxygen throughout your body. So we like to ventilate places that we're doing combustion in. Okay, another uh, primary pollutant is sulfur dioxide, and this is something we talk about a lot um, when we start talking about acid rain. It's one of the main ingredients of acid rain. When it, when it combines with water and raindrops, we get sulfuric acid. So it's a primary pollutant. It's emitted directly from coal burning plants, for example, uh, when you're using uh, coal that has sulfur impurities, which is a lot of sort of the middle southern part of the US and also other places like, like China and India. OK, so here's the quiz question for you. Is nitrogen oxide, is that a primary or secondary pollutant? So here is our reaction. We've got nitrogen, which makes up the majority of the atmosphere, 78% or so, and oxygen, which makes up 21% of the atmosphere. And when you have both of those things running through an engine that has a very, which is very hot, uh, you end up with nitrogen oxide getting emitted from the tailpipe. So is that a primary or secondary pollutant? You can think about that for a minute. And it's a primary pollutant. It's coming right out of the tailpipe. So here's another question. So we've got this nitrogen oxide coming right out of the tailpipe, and we know that's a primary pollutant now. So then we have some chemistry going on that creates nitrogen dioxide and ultimately ozone. So are these two pollutants, are they primary or secondary pollutants? So you can pause and think about that. The answer is secondary pollutants. So they don't come straight out of the tailpipe. They are formed through reactions of nitrogen oxide with other things in the atmosphere that create nitrogen dioxide and ozone. 
Okay, so a little bit more about ozone. It's one of the pollutants that we care a lot about and has different consequences depending on where it is. So it has this sort of dual nature. So you can think about which of these are true. Uh, ozone protects living things by absorbing most of the harmful UV radiation that enters the Earth's atmosphere. Or it's a nuisance pollutant that contributes to smog, impacts human respiration, and damages plant, living plant tissue. So you can think about that for a moment. And probably realize that it's a bit of a trick question because both of those things are true. It just depends on where the ozone is. So up high in the stratosphere, ozone absorbs harmful UV radiation, which is the form of ozone that I think we're all most used to thinking about. So this is just showing us the concentration of ozone throughout the troposphere down here and the stratos stratosphere up here. So this is representing the ozone layer here, and, and these little bands of light are showing you that the ozone layer absorbs nearly all of the UVC, most of the UVB, and a little bit of the UVA. But what makes it down to the surface is really mostly UVA, a little bit of UVB. So that helps us out. Down low, ozone is a secondary pollutant that um, results from fossil fuel combustion, basically. Cars, trucks, power plants, industry, all emitting pollution that forms this ground level ozone. It's a, it's a lung irritant and it's a primary component of smog. So good up high, bad down low, essentially. All right, so in summary, we've got primary pollutants. Here are some examples of those. And secondary pollutants, the two main ones we talked about were ozone and nitrogen dioxide. And then we just sort of briefly talked about the dual nature of ozone, that it's good up high, blocking UV, and bad down below, where it creates bad air quality that's damaging to us, plants, and buildings. And the next video is just going to briefly talk about some reaction basics.